Hey guys, Dave Powers here. It's a Tuesday morning, and I want to talk about benzo rumination. And I want to talk about benzo rumination uh, under the lens of it being a sort of addiction. All right. But first, what is benzo rumination? Well, if you've found yourself at two in the morning, let's say, sitting at we- uh, on WebMD. Uh, and it's now been six hours, and you've diagnosed yourself with 17 different things that possibly could happen or manifest from benzo withdrawal, you might be in the process of rumination. Rumination is just being sort of stuck in a dogfight with your own thoughts. It's this cyclical nature or cyclical behavior of just fearful worry of your con- it's usually about our condition it could be anything but it you know usually it's our health it's is this causing a heart problem is this causing this will i heal will i heal will i heal will i heal and it's just you know it's it's like trying to solve a rubik's cube by chewing bubble gum it has no effect on the outcome of will you heal you look you may heal you got at least at the very least it's a 50-50 chance you may heal you may not but the point is you're like on a ship crossing an ocean in a hurricane right so there's no time to, to, to sit there and think, will I get across? Will I not? Will the ship sink? It doesn't help the situation. What you need to be doing is steering the ship and focusing your way through the storm. You may not, you may or may not. That is true. Now, look, it is not 50-50 that you won't get better. It's more like 90 to 10, 80 to 20 that you will get better. So keep, you know, understand that first and use that as ammo in your consciousness to remind your spirit that, yes, uh, most likely I'm getting through this and I will be okay. But also see the point that by constantly worrying about your health, it's not helping you. You know, okay, you've researched this or that, now move on. You know, why go back to it? Why sit there for several hours stressing yourself out, chain smoking cigarettes or chewing your fingers off or chewing on your cheek or, you know, you haven't slept in... 24 hours, your back hurts, you're hunched over the T, <clears throat> excuse me, the monitor. And and it's just now your symptoms have gone from maybe a six to a 10. Just on sheer worry, just on sheer additional cortisol that you're pumping through your body uh, as your adrenaline's going. Now, let me talk about this as an addiction, because on some level we go, well, listen, Dave, I'm just worrying about my health. You know, I'm going through this traumatic time. It's perfectly rational for me to sit here and do some research on, well, hey, absolutely. But we're, again, we're talking about rumination. We're talking about the research has been done, but here we are. It's, you know, six months later, and we're still playing this game. And we're still caught up in this sort of mental tug of war of rumination, right? And the reason about that, uh, the reason why, and a lot of people might disagree with this, but really look into this, is that rumination is like an addiction, you know, obsessiveness, compulsiveness is a type of addiction. And when you're sitting there on WebMD and you're looking up all these symptoms, just as, a, just as though if you were sitting there biting your fingernails, it, f- it feels good. It's causing you problems, no doubt. It's causing you stress, anxiety. If you're chewing on your fingernails, you, you know, you're messing up your fingers. They might even bleed. It's not, it's not a good habit. It's, it's bad behavior. But there's a sort of guilty pleasure of it. There's some kind of gratification, some kind of pleasure or uh, self-soothing, if you will, in the process of ruminating or biting your fingernails or chewing on your cheek or whatever it is for you. So we have to look at it that way and, uh, and understand that, okay, well, how do we treat an addiction? Well, we put distance between the thing that is our, our object of desire and ourselves, right? So if you're ruminating, you'd be surprised if you made a deal with yourself. You know what? I'm not going to go to WebMD or go to one of these benzo support groups and read horror stories or watch these horror story videos on how I'm not going to get better and talk to all these people how that will reconfirm in my mind that I'm not going to get better or that I might have some kind of manifesting symptom or something deeper going on. I'm not going to do that for at least 30 days or two weeks. You'd be surprised what two weeks would do for that. You could literally break that whole... Um, magnetism in just two weeks. So what I what worked for me is I couldn't stop ruminating. I mean, I would be up all night. I mean, I, I once went almost three days, no sleep, sitting at the computer, and I swear to God, I had, you know, 16 different things I was sure I had, from rare heart conditions to blood disorders to some kind of, you know, rare neurological, you know, brain synapse disorder. 
I mean, I had myself in the grave, all but in the grave, you know. And I finally said, this is crazy. What am I doing? This isn't helping me. I get so worked up. You know, if I felt, if I, if you asked me how I felt before uh, I went to MBMD, WebMD and did all this stuff, or these benzo groups, I would say, well, I was about a six. You know, I, w- I was feeling awful. I was a six, maybe a seven. But by the end of this, uh, after all this rumination, I was at least a 10. I mean, I was hitting, the, I was hitting the ceiling. I was just in a panic state, but I couldn't break the chain. I couldn't break that gravitational pull that kept me ruminating and kept me at the, you know, at the computer or at those benzo groups. And like I said, I'm not um, <clears throat> bashing benzo groups. There's great information in benzo groups. There's a lot of support. They've helped people. God knows they've helped people from really, really dark places. But there is a small percentage of some darkness in those groups, like all groups any with anything with mental illness or mental health concerns, that there's a little bit of a risk. You got to watch out for the ruminators and the people that have been ruminating so long that it got themselves so buried into this darkness that they don't think they can get out of it. And maybe there are, so you're talking to people that are in rare situations that for whatever reason, they didn't heal five years out. And now you're thinking, God, am I going to be that person? You know, you become your company. You really do. You become your company. And that's all if you're, if that's all we surround ourselves with, then we, it's really hard to believe anything otherwise, right? And that's why I think some of you guys are attracted to this channel and to, to my words is because I'm someone saying some of the other things. I'm saying, hey, no, you're going to get better. Hey, you're in a storm. It's horrible. It's wretched. It's the worst thing you're going to go through in your life, most likely. But look, your brain will heal. And here's how you can do it. Here's you know, some of the things you got to look out for. And uh, But it's really doable. Look at me. I did it. And, and if you don't believe me, read the comments on my page. If anybody's listened to this and you've gone through it and you've healed, please leave a comment. I mean, I really just need to do a video on that. I want to make this uh, a channel and, and my my videos. I, I want to build some kind of larger support group and remind people and give them hope and not false hope. I mean, real hope that, hey, you're going to get better. But first, you got to believe it. Because if you, if you can't believe it, then you can't get be- uh, behind the incredible work and uh, courage and strength it's going to take to get you through this storm. So you got to believe it. You got to know it. That Look, I'm most likely going to get better and I need to be preparing for my life after as it will exist as someone who got better and moved on with their their life and not already be picking out caskets. That's the worst thing you could do in any fight, whether you're fighting cancer or you're a boxer. You can't go into a fight already losing like that. You You will get better. Benzo rumination is an addiction. We can break that addiction by making a pact with ourselves, by agreeing, you know, called a deal. I agree. I'm going to stop, you know, ruminating. I'm going to stop sitting on all these doom and gloom uh, websites. And I'm just going to take a break from my worrying. Look, I might not get better, but most likely I will. But worrying, see the point. And the point's this, guys. Worrying is going to prevent you from getting there. It's like trying to swim across, you know, the Gulf of Mexico with a backpack and your rumination is just boulders. They're just big rocks you're putting in that backpack and it's going to eventually pull you under the water. So take the backpack off. And maybe you see those rocks as not rocks, but gold, because that's how, unfortunately, that's kind of the mechanism of our unconscious in this situation. And that's fine. You go, I don't want to lose the gold. That's fine. But take it off for a little bit. You can come back and get it later. And that's what worked for me. I said, I'm not going to worry until I'm off this drug. And it's been, I said, I said a date. I said six months. If six months when I come off this drug, if I am still in a terrible place, then it's, it's operation reevaluate everything. Then I got to really start looking at, I'm going back to WebMD. You know, I'm looking at other options, but until then, this is the course. The course is due North. And so I'm going to stay the course. I'm going to go steady head down. I'm going to try to be as active as I can. I'm going to block those rumination thoughts. I'm going to reframe my negative self-defeating thoughts to more positive ones. I'm going to break away from poor support groups and try to establish better support groups, even if it's just one positive friend. You know what I mean? Or is it just uh, turning off negativity and trying to promote positivity, watching funny movies, listening to good music, you know, inspirational stories? That's what we need. And I said, that's what I'm going to do. And in six months, if it didn't work, then I'll reevaluate things. And it was a, it's a mental trick, no doubt, because this is like an addiction, but it worked. And I was able to say, okay, I'm not giving up this addiction, but I'm going to put it down for a little bit. You know, I'm not going to stop biting my nails forever, 
but how about for a month? And in that trick, once you get enough space between that gravitational pull, it breaks away. And you, you do so much better, guys. I cannot stress this enough. If you can break rumination, whatever your symptoms report is, it will decrease by a couple uh, numbers. If you're saying, because at some point during withdrawal, you just become a, a state of torment, right? You, you might start off at a six and, and, and somewhere in the middle, you're just an eight or a seven. You're just every day you feel awful and that's it. It's just a steady seven. But like I said, when you ruminate, it's an eight, it's a nine, it's a 10. You know, so by removing that, it's more steady, it's more manageable, and then you build up some momentum, and then you'll see the symptoms will start to decrease. So, uh, that's a promise, guys. Remember, you will get better. There is life after benzo. And hey, if you like this content, please again uh, click the like or consider subscribing, and maybe share the video or let people know that this is out there. I really want to spread some more positivity, and and just not the doom and gloom because. The truth of the matter is you guys will get better and we need the positivity to have the strength to do it. All right, guys, Godspeed.